But we're starting our program this evening with the story that has gripped this nation for over a week now, and that's the story of the White House under fire, the allegations involving President Clinton and the former White House intern Monica Lewinsky. Here's the latest. Today, former White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta testified before a Washington grand jury. During a break in his testimony, Panetta was subpoenaed by lawyers for Paula Jones. Mr. Ginsburg, really? you, this has to happen fairly quickly, wouldn't you agree? I hope so. I'm getting very tired. <laughs> Just generally, it has to happen within a reasonable period of time. Or William Ginsburg I'm threatened to go back home to California if his client Thank couldn't get the proper immunity package approved by Kenneth Starr. My fervent prayer is that for the sake of the president and the sake of this nation, that this matter is resolved soon. As grand jury so testimony he... resumed this morning, it was former White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta's day in the barrel. Come on, fellas. Don't hurt yourself. Not only was he forced to endure the crush of news crews, but he was also hit with a subpoena to testify in the Paula Jones civil suit. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. If Mr. Clinton is indeed fighting for his political life, then last night proved once again that the man can focus when he wants to. His 72-minute speech dealt only with affairs of state. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of our union is strong. Focusing on his record and ignoring his extracurricular activities gave Mr. Clinton a chance to appear presidential, and it seemed to be just what he needed. This morning, polls showed a boost in Mr. Clinton's approval rating. The sordid state of affairs was all painfully evident when a frightened Betty Curry, the president's secretary, had to make her way through a gauntlet of hungry reporters. She seemed just the latest morsel in a feeding frenzy that still has no end in sight. And standing by in Washington now is CBS News White House correspondent Scott Pelley. Scott, good evening. Good evening, Brian. We understand the Treasury Department has now been brought into contact with Kenneth Starr's office. What's that all about? Well, it's a very interesting problem that they have tonight, Brian. The Independent Counsel's Office is investigating a report that a Secret Service agent may have seen the President and Ms. Lewinsky alone together in a study that adjoins the Oval Office. Well, now Ken Starr wants to subpoena Secret Service agents to get their testimony. Problem is, that's never happened before. CBS News has learned that the head of the Secret Service, Lou Merletti, met with Kenneth Starr face to face and told him that if they subpoenaed the agents, it would ruin the relationship that the agents have with the first family. Starr has the proffer from Lewinsky and Ginsburg. Any idea when he will either accept, reject, or amend that proffer? Ken Starr, at this point, is trying to verify Lewinsky's story. That's what the grand jury is about. That's what the potential subpoenas to the Secret Service agents are about. And what he'd like to do is learn more about whether her story is true or false before they give her a complete pass on prosecution. All right, Scott Pelley in Washington. Scott, thanks so very much. With the possible exception of Mrs. Clinton herself, the president's staunchest defender may well be Mr. Clinton's longtime political operative, James Carville. James, good evening. Well, good Welcome. evening to you. Okay. You and Mrs. Clinton have both charged this all a result of a vast right-wing conspiracy. You've declared war well, on yeah. Kenneth Starr. <laughs> Aside right. from talking about that on TV, what are you going to do about it? Well, first of all, I mean, the war is about this, is about who controls this country, the person that the people elected and put in office or somebody that was put in by a right-wing hack political judge at the behest of right-wing hack political senators. I mean, let's review the bidding as my mother would say. Uh, Jesse Helms and Locke Faircloth were seen screaming at Judge David Sintel, a Jesse Helms appointee, who appointed Ken Starr okay. in office, the most right-wing partisan prosecutor we had, who represented, let me finish, the cigarette companies, who went down to Pat Robinson School, whose people have leaked and leaked and leaked. What we have here, about $45 million into this Whitewater investigation, after they couldn't find anything on Whitewater, something that started out with a, with a land deal, we're now got some poor, poor woman in a, in a hotel bar feeding a whiskey speedballer. James, we got all that. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I'm talking to lawyers now. I'm looking to see if there's something that we can file. We're very concerned about, about leaks that, that, that may involve criminal activity in violation of Rule 6E. We also feel like that he is still improperly put there. We feel like this, this investigation has gone far astray from anything that, that, that can be done. You're telling me you're going to take Starr to court? Me, but, well, I don't know if I take, take Starr to court. There are other lawyers that do that. But I'm taking Starr to the court of public opinion. That's what, I, that, that's what I, I, I'm interested in. I think it is a purely political operation, and I want, to, I want to cause it to be a purely political operation, but I'm saying there are other lawyers that are looking at that. Where does Lewinsky fit into this conspiracy theory? Is she victimizing the president, or is she too a victim? Yeah, I, 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 I'd rather not call it a conspiracy theory. 
What I'm calling is a factual. That's the first lady called well, it. I mean, it looks first lady. Is you disagreeing with her? <laughs> I think it's factual. I don't think it's a theory. I think, I think it is a fact that, that, that this has been motivated by, by political enemies of the president from the appointment of Ken Starr. Now we find out that Ms. Tripp, the woman that, 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 that right. was, was now had her thing, she was selling it to a right-wing agent. And we find this out. Who is surprised by any of this every time it comes up? What, I, what I'm concerned about is who is going to run this country, Brian? Are, are the people that, are, that, that vote people in office, are they going to run the country? Or are people that come up and say, we have an unlimited budget, accountable to no one, and we're going to hound this man until he leaves tell, office? Tell that, me this. Is, is Lewinsky in this part of victimizing the president, or is she victim? Well, I mean, I think we got to wait and see till all the facts come out. My, my sense is that she's probably a victim in this, and they got her to have, apparently, from what I understand, it threatened to jail her parents, and they had, I don't know, nine government agents in a room with her. Well, God knows what the poor woman's going to say. Why, why are you so sure, James, the president's innocence in all this? Is it just out of friendship and loyalty? Well... I mean, I, 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 I agree that I'm not the most objective person I mean, in the okay. world. I, I'm, I'm crazy about the president. I, you know, I know the president to be a, a bright man, and I, I just don't think that he would do anything like this. And, and, but, 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 the real, but, but the real problem here is, and, is, is that they're just hounding this man, and, they, and he does his job, and he's doing his job, and he remains popular, and, he's, and, and, and Starr just keeps spending money because he can't I find under, it. I understand that, but the reason I ask why you personally believe in him is because this is a man who has admitted to past indiscretions. Well, I said it's a set on, set so, on this so, network. So what makes you sure, so sure that he's now telling the truth? Because he told me. And because he's, he's not going to do anything, anything this stupid, and uh, and I, you know, I believe him, and 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 I think as this thing unfolds, as we th see things happen, I think more and more people are coming to the same conclusion. I know you. I know how you want all this to end, but deep, <laughs> deep in your heart, are you telling me that you harbor none of the fears, none of the fears, that so many d silent Democrats now seem to be concerned with? Well, I'll say some Democrats are always going to be silent. Deep in my heart, you my, pre my president told me that this didn't happen, and I'm kind of like Dale Evans said, the Bible said it, I believe it, and that settles it. The way I look at it, the president told me, I believe it, and that settles it as far as I'm concerned. And, and you know, again, but what we're losing sight of here, what we're losing sight of here is that we have these thugs in, in, in the so-called independent counsel's office that, that were put in by a partisan political person, they have now spent over forty million dollars mm -hmm. on this foolishness and, and the country wants to know who is going to run this country the people that they elect or the people that hack right-wing judges put in, 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 in I'm gonna have to let that be the last word okay. conspirators <laughs> hacks, <laughs> hacks. the last one thugs thugs thanks so very much okay <laughs> James I appreciate you that. bet for a complete timeline of the White House crisis and information about past presidential scandals as well we invite you to visit our website the address is cbs.com slash public eye much more to come, including a little bit later, a talk with America's youngest Olympian. Figure skater Tara Lipinski will be with us. We'll be back.